Okay, yeah, so um, I'm Mike Stelfox. I lead the uh, product and application engineering teams for Fertelix. Um, if you don't know about Fertelix, uh, we were a startup, started about uh, back in 2018. Um, we provide tools and methodology for verification and validation of autonomous driving systems. Um, we're actually based out of uh, Israel. Um, I'm actually based in Austin, Texas. Uh, have a number of people here uh, in the Detroit area, so uh, kind of go through this. And my talk today is about um, how to leverage vir virtual testing at scale to, to achieve safe autonomy. Um, so yeah, if we kind of look at the, the challenge um, of developing autonomous driving systems, I'm sure this is no news to this audience, but you know, these are some of the most complex systems uh, ever built. You know, if you look at the combination of hardware, you know, there's hundreds of chips, uh, very complex silicon devices, hundreds of millions of lines of code, uh, and then multiple machine learning systems where the specification of that behavior is changing over time in a, in a way that's not really known um, exactly. Um, you combine that um, with the environment in which these systems need to operate, uh, where you have all kinds of, of different actors. You know, you have you know potentially pedestrians, other drivers, other autonomous driving systems, weather conditions. We heard earlier uh, Cruz about you know San Francisco, uh, the crazy driving conditions, the double parked vehicles. You know, all kinds of of um, situations that the vehicle needs to be able to make uh, decisions in order to, to make safe choices and, and drive uh, correctly. Uh, and there's, there's the knowns. You know, we heard a lot today about the requirements. You want to do everything from a requirements-based driven uh, development process. Um, but, you know, it's, that's sort of the tip of the iceberg because there's the, there's the unknown unknowns. And that's, I think, the long tail that's sort of preventing uh, you know, autonomous driving systems from really coming into to mass production and, and deployment. Um, and so you combine you know, these two things, you, you really end up with just millions, almost infinite number of scenarios under which you need to test that system to make sure it's going to behave correctly and safely under you know, all those uh, conditions. Uh, now. Um, you know, I think most, uh, most people developing cars, trucks, autonomous systems um, have realized that traditional approach of test driving isn't scaling. Um, you know, it's, while it's a necessary thing, you, you absolutely want to do test driving of the physical uh, vehicle at the end of the process, um, it's really not enough uh, to really thoroughly uh, verify and validate the, the system. And even if you could do it, there's probably not enough time to do it in a reasonable amount of time. There was a report from Rand Corporation uh, last year where they were you know, sort of estimating that if you had a fleet of 100 vehicles driving 24-7, um, you know, to, to do the amount of test driving required would take 11 billion miles, about 518 years. Um, and even with all of that, it's a real false sense of safety because there's no way when, a, when you're in a physical device like that, you can test all the edge cases, you know, the really unsafe cases where, you know, you could potentially um, get into life-threatening uh, situations. Um, now, um, you know, all of this is leading to the fact um, that there was a report earlier this year from McKinsey where if you look at the development costs uh, for different types of autonomous driving systems from L3, you know, traffic jam, ALKS kind of systems through L4 highway, autonomous trucking all the way up through uh, robo taxis. Um, the average cost uh, for development um, is getting up into the, you know, three to four billion uh, dollar range. Um, and over half of those costs are in verification and validation. So verification and validation is becoming the most expensive and most greatest effort part of actually producing vehicles, uh, in a, autonomous vehicles, in a way that you can um, really deploy them. Uh, now, 
uh, this, this is pretty interesting for me you know, personally uh, because, as Jamie mentioned, I spent about 30 years in the chip industry uh, and where I was uh, working with customers around the world who develop advanced you know, silicon devices. Um, and before I moved in, into this, this area and I wanted to, you know, I found this really interesting one to try to tackle verification validation problems for autonomous driving systems. Um, so if you look at companies, you know, like Apple or Samsung, Qualcomm, Intel, um, they've been dealing with this kind of problem for years. You know, they're, they're, the, these devices are extremely complex system chips. You know, if you look at the, the, the system chip in the latest iPhone 14, the A16, uh, that system chip has 16 billion transistors, okay? And they manage to produce a phone every year. Okay, now, uh, there's a very high cost of failure, arguably not as high of a cost of, as an autonomous driving system, you know, crashing or, or killing uh, people. There's a very high cost of failure. The cost of, you know, building one of those chips is approaching a billion dollars. Um, and if you make a mistake and you have to, Respin what they call respin the silicon. Uh, you can sometimes be out of business. Besides the cost of the wafer change itself, the time to market you, you, in that market you, you're dead if you if you miss the window by a few months. You know, um, and so uh, you know they also have the the problem of a nearly infinite scenario test space. Um, it's just on a, a much smaller level. Um, there's no time to verify everything completely. Um, and so I think there's uh, a lot of learnings, and in fact, you know, several of the founders from Fortelix uh, came from the chip industry, where we had learned a lot of things over the years that worked well there, and we've sort of tried to adapt those, and significantly, I would say, for autonomous driving systems. Um, but if you look at um, the semiconductor industry for 20 plus years, that same graph we just saw from McKinsey, that's been the graph in that industry for the last 20 years. Over half the costs have always been in verification and validation. And the industry had to significantly change not just the tooling, the methodologies, the cultures in the company to actually uh, to deal with that. And the companies that did not adapt aren't, aren't around today. They're not really the ones. You know, Apple, for example, was not developing silicon devices 20 plus years ago. They weren't developing their own silicon. They're one of the ones that have really mastered that, as everybody's quite aware. Um, so um, what I wanted to do here is really talk about some very high level things that um, I think uh, I've seen that the leading chip companies have done to overcome the verification challenges because, and talk about how they can be applied to autonomous driving systems. Um, and there's really kind of a few, yeah, again, in the verification space, three kind of major things they did, they've done very well. Uh, one, uh, forever, there's been a focus on simulation. You know, you, 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 go, you don't go build a chip and then test it. You know, it's too expensive. Um, so, so for 30 plus years, you know, you were doing simulation and there's, multiple levels of simulation. Some, sim some simulations are more higher fidelity, you know, dealing with analog effects and things like that. Some are more functionally focused, logically focused, and so forth. Um, but the first thing is, you know, virtualization. You have to do more of your verification, most of your verification, in a virtual simulation-based environment. Um, the second thing is abstraction. When you have complexity, you have to use abstraction. Abstraction is the way to deal with complexity, right? With silicon devices, when there's 16 billion transistors on a, on a chip, there's no way an engineer can sit down and draw out 16 billion transistors, right? So they've, over the years, they've built up different technologies and languages to you know, automatically create the transistors and the layouts and the physics of, of how all that, that stuff works. Um, but similarly, in verification, it used to be uh, when I got it, when I started in the field, verification meant some engineer had to sit down and analyze the requirements and just start writing tests. 
And, and, and the game was who, who, who could hire the most people to write the most tests to do all the verification. Well, eventually, that didn't scale. You couldn't hire enough engineers to do all the verification, because every time you added more functionality, the, the verification problem was exponentially growing. Um, and so they eventually built a, uh, uh, an abstract verification language in that industry. It's called System Verilog um, that was uh, basically allowed you to abstract the verification problem um, and to do it in a way where you could use tooling automation on top of that language to automate the test generation and the verification, a lot of the verification problem. Um, and so that's where the third um, pillar of this uh, solution that's worked well there is automation. There's tons of, of tools and automation technologies that can basically interpret a, a, a verification, the verification language and automate a lot of the low-level work of creating the tests uh, so that you can run you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of tests every night at scale. Um, and all of this uh, required a lot of new methodologies, a lot of change of how you're doing the verification and validation uh, over the years. And that's been a, just a, a, a constant um, circle of change you know, over uh, 20, 30 years uh, at time. Um, so it, you know, from, from the Fortelix perspective, you know, we're really trying to apply all of these same principles, uh, which they apply very well, and all these same learnings to autonomous driving systems. And that's, that's basically what I want to focus on for the rest of the presentation is, you know, how can we leverage those same principles that have worked really well, you know, that you can get an iPhone, a new generation iPhone every year um, with, you know, double uh, the complexity and so forth. Um, how can we apply that to autonomous driving systems? Um, so the first thing is, if we look at abstraction, um, there's, I think most people are probably familiar, there's ASAM is the industry uh, standard body here. Earlier this year, they released a new verification language called Open Scenario 2. Uh, it turns out uh, Fortelix was uh, deeply involved in that because we had created, as part of our offering, a verification language called MSDL which stood for Measurable Scenario Description Language, we donated that into ASAM and helped drive that standard. So it's heavily based on, on what um, we did. And you know, the, the thing about Open Scenario 2 is it a, it's a really a, brings a paradigm shift opportunity to this uh, industry. Uh, first of all, um, it, it's a very high level of abstraction. Okay, so it allows you to describe scenarios under which you want to test your system, and uh, your system being an autonomous vehicle, at a very abstract level, um, in the domain of AVs, right? So the syntax and everything is all around describing scenarios under which uh, would make sense, like a cut-in or a lead vehicle scenario or, you know, wh whatever makes sense to, to, to test your, your system. Um, it's also very... Uh, human readable. So it's, it's what's called a declarative language. Um, you can actually, even if you're not a programmer, you can actually read it and understand it. It's, it's, so it serves as a nice specification for your scenario intent. Um, and most importantly, it's built to enable automation. So not just, you know, it's a great way to represent and, and abstract a scenario. You, know, you can build automation, which is what Fortelix does, that interprets the language and can automatically, from that, create lots of tests, which we'll go into in the coming slides. Um, it also has this capability where it supports dual interpretation. So you can use it both for actively generating tests to drive scenarios, as well as if you have a lot of road data and you want to be able to extract from your road data uh, scenarios that occurred, there's like kind of a passive monitoring or observing capability you can use the language for. Um, and of course, it's a standard, and, and there's already multiple vendors supporting it, um, uh, including us, um, obviously. So it does, I think it's going to provide a, a, you know, a lot of power in the industry for multi-tool um, 
interoperability and, and you know, new flows and such. Um, another key factor, which has been key, was also key in the semiconductor industry, is it's built for reuse. Because it's an object-oriented language, um, and it's got a lot of facilities in it for com composition and reuse, which is really important if you're building you know, a line of vehicles, right? And you, you don't want to start from scratch your scenario verification effort every single system, right? So if you have a, a line that's going to run in one country versus another country, or it needs to start in, you know, like San Francisco, like we heard this morning with Cruz, and then later go to Phoenix, you want to be able to leverage a lot of the core um, things that you build, but then extend and, and change them for the next project. Um, and then, um, it's, while it's, its real strength is in abstraction, the same language can be used to express you know, very abstract scenarios to logical scenarios to just very specific concrete scenarios. So it's, it's very full-featured, I could say, in that way. <clears throat> now, if we take a look at um, the kind of automation that is enabled uh, for generating tests and running simulations at scale, you know, which, by the way, I think everybody wants to run at scale, but if you don't have tests, meaningful tests to run, it's hard to run at scale. Um, and so just at a high level, the way uh, this works is um, you, you say have a scenario you'd like to describe, like a cut-in. I have my system, my vehicle, my AV, and I want to have a vehicle drive next to it and cut in front of it, okay? It's the classic simple scenario. Um, so you describe that as an abstract, what's called an abstract scenario in Open Scenario 2, uh, and that cut-in is a, abstracted in a way that it could represent any cut-in scenario, any variant of a cut-in scenario, or all variants of a cut-in scenario, one, one description, okay? Um, and if you have automation, like we build at Fortelix, you can read in that description, and from that description, you can generate many, many different variants. And there's a notion in the language of what's called constraints so that you can sort of steer the test generation to what you would like, you know, very different combinations of, of, of cut-in var uh, variants. For example, you may want to generate some very aggressive cut-ins where you know, maybe the, the, their vehicles are high speed and cutting in really close to your AV, or you want to do something where you do a cut in right before in the middle of a junction or after a junction, or maybe, you know, from some road data, you know some very specific parameters that were really interesting that you want to, re, you know, be able to reproduce and, and test around that in a virtual way. Uh, you, can, you can generate all, all those different kinds of combinations and many more. Um, if we kind of dive a little deeper into the test generation, um, and in particular the way we're doing things at Fortelix, um, it's, it's also a really good um, approach for finding the unknowns. Um, you know, I heard questions earlier about how do you find the unknown unknowns, um, and that's, you know, that, that same problem actually exists in chip verification, you know. Even if you knew everything, it's, impo it's really impossible to think of for, as a human of every single case and combination of parameters. And so the way uh, the automation works that Fortelix provides is we, we, we have what's called a constrained random test generator. And so if we look at our system under test, and I represent it very abstractly with this three-dimensional box, which is representing the space of the ODD in which I need to test the, the system, um, the, the kind of the approach, the way it works is you analyze your requirements um, and you also, beyond the requirements for that ODD, you're going to go through and analyze those risk dimensions. Um, like we heard uh, the, from the Cruz presentation earlier, well, we know in San Francisco we do have these um, double parked vehicles. That's a risk dimension that's very unique to that ODD. Um, so you're going to go through and analyze your risk dimensions based on your ODD. And within our tool, you capture that into a verification plan, which is actually uh, in part of the tooling called a V-plan. Um, and the V-plan is just a very much like a hierarchical test plan description of, of your test goals, effectively. Um, 
I need to test a cut in. So I make sure I cut in from the left and the right. These are all the interesting speeds and, and performance characteristics that I need to test it under. Um, and then what you do with Open Scenario 2 is you can capture coverage metrics, which basically say, I want to cover all of these parameters about the scenarios. And they're represented by those blue circles in the space. So it's basically allowing you to create like a matrice of your test goals that you would like to observe uh, you've fulfilled in order to thoroughly exercise the, the system. And sort of independent of that, uh, we provide a constrained random test generator. So this is this piece of software machinery that reads the Open Scenario 2 description like an abstract scenario, the cut-in we described. And from that, you can create many variants, okay? And you, know, you can use constraints to target it to very specific areas. Um, but one of the nice things is it uses this notion of random or constrained random. So it's picking values for the parameters of the scenarios it's generating in a way that not only covers your goals, and you can tell what's covered by the blue areas, the coverage points that are measured, but oftentimes it goes beyond your goals because of the randomness. And that exposes the unknowns, oftentimes. You know, it comes up with cases that are very hard to think of by an engineer and come up from scratch. And so in this way, the coverage and the separate uh, constrained random test generation provide a very thorough sort of check and balance for creating tests and making sure that you've thoroughly tested things. Um, kind of diving into the V plan in a bit more detail, this really is a way to give you a, you know, the hardest problem in verification and validation is when are you done? How do you know when you're done? You're never done, right? You're never, you can never test everything. But you need to have some kind of objective metric that you can, you know, measure and say, okay, we think we're done because this is our definition of done. And so the, the coverage um, in, in Open Scenario 2 combined with tooling like we provide with a V plan allows you to define that where, as I was saying earlier, you look at um, different things that you want to test. It could be parameters of the ego software stack. Like, I want to make sure I've tested all of the interesting states. Um, I want to make sure certain parameters, I've gone through all the interesting values of those. The HMI, you know, I want to make sure I've tested all the Im important ways that the user can interact with the ADAS system. Um, you, you have scenario parameters that you want to make sure you did all of the values of, I did left and right cut-ins, but I do those at all the interesting accelerations of the cut-in and so forth. Um, combine that, cross that, for example, with your weather. Did I do all that in sunny weather and foggy weather and winter weather, et cetera? You capture those things. Um, they're, they're connected to a V plan, and you can, if connect this also, we have a way to integrate that with your requirements management system. Uh, and this gives you like an automated requirements traceability flow so that as you're running simulations, the coverage results go into a database. They're tracked back to the vPlan and aggregated, and that's connected to your requirements. So you get this sort of automatic feedback and you know did I test that, and how well did I test that requirement in a you know, very thorough way? Um, the last element of this abstraction is reuse. Uh, I said it's really important. You don't want to be building all these environments, all these verification validation environments from scratch every time. And so Open Scenario 2 allows you to build up kind of reusable environments where you can encapsulate expertise uh, an engineering effort so you can reuse that from project to project. Um, and at Fortalix, actually, we've built reusable packages we call V-suites, verification and validation suites, where we provide verification plans, abstract scenarios, maps, coverage KPIs, and checkers for specific functions, like, say, an ADAS function, emergency braking can have like a whole starting point for emergency braking. So each new project doesn't need to create everything from scratch. You can pick that up, extend it for your needs. You know, or as a customer, you know, somebody that's building their own, you can use Open Scenario 2 to create those kind of reusable um, components. Again, in the semiconductor industry, there's whole 
people selling, you know, verification IP, they call it, that basically is used in a similar way. Um, and then the last element of the solution is virtualization. Now, virtual simulators have been here for a while, right? People are using them, um, and uh, it's really now about going to scale. How do you use these at scale? Different simulators, uh, these are some of the ones that we work with. Um, they are, are good at supporting, you know, vehicle dynamics, you know, granular, you know, more fidelity on vehicle dynamics versus, say, perception. Oftentimes, customers are using multiple of those simulators based on the type of uh, system you're developing. With Vertelix, our, our verification platform, we integrate with all of those simulators uh, where we're allowing you to you know, build your verification environment in Open Scenario 2, do that automation, and then simulate and orchestrate that onto the simulator of choice. So in that way, the same scenario can be reused across any simulator. So if you start with one simulator, you want to use a different one, all that verification collateral you've developed is totally reusable across them. Um, and in general, we, we work closely with lots of simulator vendors. We actually work with in-house customers developing their own in-house simulators as well. Um, recently announced deeper collaborations with NVIDIA on their DriveSim 2 uh, simulator, which they're um, taking out with customers. IPG uh, CarMaker, we've worked with them for a number of years. We're working a lot on scaling, you know, how to really scale, build cloud-based scale environments. And with uh, AI Motive, we just a couple weeks back announced a partnership on focusing on kind of advancing perception-based verification um, together with their uh, simulator technology. So yeah, if you kind of pull this all together um, and look at it from a methodological view, this is what in Fortalix we call coverage-driven verification. And this is just kind of a high-level view of how this all comes together into a, a kind of methodology that we're working with in many, many customers today for really enabling virtualized testing at scale. Um, so it starts, as I mentioned earlier, by creating your goals. You capture a VNV plan you know, in the tool from analyzing your requirements, risk dimensions. You capture coverage. That's your what. What do I need to verify? And a thorough measure of that. So it gives you a way to you know, keep track of that as you're running simulations. The next step is based on your plan, um, you create or reuse abstract scenarios in Open Scenario 2. Okay, so you can either write them from scratch um, with the language, um, or, you know, for example, from Fortelix, we have what we call V-suites. We provide those out of the box for like highway and ADAS type um, functions. Um, and those, uh, alongside those, you, you, in, in addition to the scenarios themselves, there's the coverage checks and KPIs that are relevant for those scenarios. Um, you then, you know, take and compile those in and generate lots of tests and orchestrate those running at scale on one or more simulators uh, that you're, you're, you're using for your project. Um, we collect all the data into a, a database and we have tools for doing uh, analytics and evaluation of KPIs. Uh, so you, you typically are doing KPI kind of evaluation as well as um, triaging failures and debugging. When you're running at scale, managing all of that data and how you fail your tri triage at scale is, is a problem by itself, and we have tooling uh, that helps uh, automate that. Um, and then you look at your coverage goals. So as you run and aggregate all the results, you look at the coverage and make sure that you've achieved uh, your goals. Um, and so you go through this loop until you've actually completed your, your verification goals and you've you know, gotten rid of all of the, the failures uh, and, and met your uh, verification plan. So yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Um, this is the approach uh, that we're you know, working with customers on today. It's based on a lot of learnings uh, from, like I said, the semiconductor industry, but obviously adapted in a, a pretty significant way for AVs. And, uh, we actually have a booth in the exhibition area, so if you're interested in more information, we'll be over there uh, today and tomorrow. So thanks. Does anybody have any questions for Mike about coverage?
driven verification. Here we go. Thanks for the presentation. Thanks for the presentation, Mike. It was really, really good. Um, so I want to pull on the thread around traceability to requirements uh, for a second. And you know, you talked about uh, users of this, um, this abstraction language, uh, OSC 2.0, being able to write you know uh, abstract test descriptions. Is there anything on the roadmap, either with Fortelix or any of the folks that you work with? on being able to automatically generate these abstract scenarios from requirements? Um, not, I'm not familiar, I'm not aware of anything from a commercial perspective. We're not developing any kind of technology like that. I have seen uh, some, cu a customer actually has developed a, a kind of approach to take SysML and create from SysML uh, abstra, uh, OSC2 description. Um, and yeah, it is a fairly abstract, if you look at Open Scenario 2, it's, anybody can actually go to the ASAM website and download the manual. Um, it's fairly abstract, so I think it could be possible, but uh, we haven't explored that directly. Excellent. Well, one comment, that's what we're showing in our booth. So what we're showing is the creation of abstract scenarios okay. from higher level uh, models of actors. Yes. So what we do is very complementary, would be sort of a front end to what Fortelix is doing. Thank you. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. We're right at okay. time. Appreciate Thanks. it. Sure. Cheers. One more set of applause for Mike.